This video is from my Most Important Cloud Concepts collection. If you'd like to watch the full series where I describe all concepts in a single video, check out the link in the description. So let's get started right away. And first concept that we're going to be talking about is scaling. So when we say scaling, what we're generally referring to is application scaling. So say for example, you develop an app and like this is a chart that shows the request rate over time. And in the beginning, like your app basically has no traffic and a lot of apps these days tend to like go viral. Maybe there's uh, some kind of blog post or it gets featured on some news outlet or something like that. And they can very quickly explode. So their traffic basically looks like a curve like this, right? And the problem with this is that a a lot of applications aren't really meant to handle this rapid increase in traffic from an influx of users. And typically what happens is that you see like errors on the web page or the application just stops working. Um, so this is something that cloud computing can help with quite a bit. In fact, it's one of the main benefits of using cloud computing because it allows us to scale rather seamlessly. So in terms of the scaling concept, there's two kind of subtopics within scaling. There's what's called vertical scaling, vertical scaling. And then there is horizontal scaling, right? These are the two methods that we use to scale up our application to handle an increase in traffic. Let's talk about vertical first because it's kind of the traditional approach before cloud computing really existed, although you can still vertically scale your application within cloud providers these days. So what I mean by vertical scaling is imagine that you have a machine that's hosting your application. And what we used to do in the past is when we had a, a rapid increase in traffic to our application, kind of like what we were talking talking about right here, what we would do is try to scale this machine upwards, right? So we would add more CPU, maybe add more cores, we would add more memory, we would add more disk space, you know, there's a lot of different um, kind of dimensions that you can scale on even network throughput uh, is another one. So we would basically just scale this instance up uh, as much as we could. And if you ever like tried to buy computer parts before, you've probably noticed that, you know, when, when you try to buy a more powerful CPU or more memory and add it to a machine, like talking about a single stick in terms of memory here, what you probably notice is that when you buy like 16 gigabytes of memory, for example, it costs like some amount, say it's $100, right? But when you buy 32 gigabytes of memory, right, in a single stick, it doesn't necessarily cost $200, which is double 16. It may cost like 225, right? And the same kind of thing applies, right? If, if you keep on kind of doing this, if you buy a 64 gigabyte stick, it wouldn't necessarily cost double of 225. It may cost more. It may cost like five or $600, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that as you vertically scale up your application, you end up getting diminishing returns in terms of cost. So this is actually one of the, the downfalls of using vertical scaling, right? This is a negative of vertical scaling. Cost is a problem, right? Because you get diminishing returns and these um, machines can quickly become very, very expensive. It's also a, a problem in terms of your application stability, right? If this instance, let's call this stability, stability. If this single instance that you scaled up, you know, suddenly becomes unavailable, there's some like kind of problem with your application on this instance, then your entire application pretty much goes down. Right. Um, so this is kind of the main problem with vertical scaling. Cost becomes an issue and stability or availability of your application uh, becomes questionable. And now this is where horizontal scaling comes in because it solves uh, both of these problems. So horizontal scaling uses a very different approach, whereas vertical, you're, you're kind of adding a more beefy machine or you're beefing up your machine to handle an increase in traffic. Horizontal uses a different mental model, different paradigm, if you will. And instead of adding more resources to a single machine, its mental model is why don't we just clone our application and host it on multiple other machines, right? So have smaller machines that typically cost less uh, as a really, really large machine, but just have a whole bunch of them. And so if you think about this, right, if you have an application now and you have one, two, three, four, five machines, if one of these machines ends up going down, like maybe there's a problem with this machine or there's a problem with this machine, these other instances that are still here, one, two, and four, still have the ability to serve incoming traffic from your users. So for your stability of your application is greatly improved. 
Also in terms of cost, as we saw, you can buy a lot cheaper machines, right? So you can go for these, a lot of 16 gigabyte memory sticks, if we're just talking about memory, for example, and, you know, stack them on each machine. And the total amount of memory that you have across each machine will be a lot cheaper than if you have just one machine with like, you know, 64 gigabytes where it costs $600. So the benefit here is that you get more stability. So plus in terms of stability and you get potentially lower cost, right? Um, and lower cost. So these are the advantages of going with horizontal scaling. In fact, this is the most kind of popular approach that, you know, cloud computing makes very, very easy.